Hey gadget groupies, I'm a big fan of smartwatches. Huawei as a company is starting to build a little momentum here in the United States, landing the Nexus 6P and releasing their own Android Wear watch. This company leapfrogged the first generation of science fair looking geeky timepieces and jumped directly to a more fashionable offering. And we're taking a look at the most expensive variation Huawei offers. A base model Huawei watch will cost $349 for a steel body and leather band. The watch I'm reviewing costs $449 for a black steel body and a black steel bracelet. For those paying attention to the smartwatch landscape, that's the same price Apple charges for a steel band without an Apple Watch included. Huawei's watch features a 42mm diameter full circle display. This is a great contrasty OLED screen with a resolution of 400 by 400. Text and fine detail is noticeably sharper and less pixelated than the last generation of 320 by 320 res watches. They've managed to do a better job balancing screen size to bezels than my previous Android Wear champ, the LG G Watch R. In terms of design, Huawei represents something of a halfway point between the G Watch R and the Moto 360. Smartwatches are still a bit thick, but the way the sides taper into the watch strap helps the watch look more fitted to the wrist and avoids the look Moto has, like an Oreo lump is growing out of your arm. The button is off-center, mounted around 2 o'clock on the dial. Huawei claims this makes the hardware more ergonomic. It honestly made little difference for me in daily operation. It provides the same shortcuts as all wear watches. Single tap toggles a screen, double tap sends the watch into movie theater mode, triple tap lights up a higher brightness mode, and a long press slides open an app drawer. The back of the watch houses a heart rate monitor, which is flanked by pogo pins to charge the watch on its magnetic dock. The watch looks really slick in black, and the bracelet is a nice weighty strap which wears well when fitted properly. The butterfly clasp has a nice satisfying clicky action, and the bracelet does have quick release pins to easily swap out a new band if you want to customize the look. It's an 18 millimeter band, which is a touch narrower than most of the other watches we've reviewed, but still a standard size for third party bands. Happily, we've got premium build materials on tap. As mentioned, the body is stainless steel, making it far more durable than aluminum watch bodies, and the screen Green is clad in sapphire crystal, which should make it far more scratch resistant than glass displays. It's a really nice look, fantastic fit and finish, but the thickness of the watch body still might be an issue for women or guys with thinner wrists. Huawei claims a day and a half of battery life, and this might be one of the first gadgets I've ever reviewed that the manufacturer estimate was spot on. Over several weeks of use, I could always count on at least 34 hours of runtime. Taking the watch off its charger at 8 a.m., even on some of my busier days, it would handily last until around 6 p.m. the next day. If I went easy on it, I could sometimes hypermile to almost 40 hours of runtime. Very impressive performance for its standard 300 milliamp hour battery. This is very good runtime for Android Wear and compares well against Apple Watch and Samsung's gear, but it's still utterly beat by watches like the Pebble Time, which use far more power efficient screens. And we'll talk about displays more in just a bit. The charge cradle is a bit finicky though, and more than once over my review period, I would feel the magnets latch on, but not perfectly align the charge pins, meaning the watch wasn't charging. You learn to check the watch before walking away, but if there's room for Huawei to improve, prove it's in how this charge dock works. This is also my first Wear watch with proper support for Wi-Fi, and it's a handy little feature. Walking around my condo, it's just long enough to defeat Bluetooth if my phone is in the living room while I work in the office. The pass to Wi-Fi works surprisingly well for keeping me alerted to new notifications while still allowing for voice actions and controls. The main problem facing a watch like this is in using a phone-style screen. The OLED circle here is bright and contrasty, but still relies on a high brightness mode to overcome daylight. A gadget this small with such a petite battery will never be able able to overpower the sun. Readability in direct sun is far behind e-paper and mirror sole displays which reflect light back at the user. One of my favorite features of wearing a smartwatch is in how it complements my phone and fills in the gaps on my phone's weaknesses. When phone and watch use similar screen technologies, that means they have the same strengths and weaknesses, and it's likely my phone will handle daylight better than a smaller gadget might. Now briefly discussing health issues, many of the smartwatches I've reviewed in the past, especially those with heart rate monitors have aggravated my psoriasis, leaving me an angry little red splotch of dermatitis on my wrist. Happily, with a couple weeks of wearing the Huawei watch, I've dealt with precious few episodes of skin scarring. Your mileage will vary, but I'm very satisfied with Huawei's choice of materials for this wearable. As for software, this is Android Wear, and Huawei has done little to customize that experience. This will be as much a pro for some people as it will be a con for others. Many will appreciate that you don't need a companion app on your phone for some features, but others might feel this setup doesn't differentiate Huawei much from its competitors. It's a snappy and pretty UI flicking through Google Now style cards, but I still can't shake the feeling that this aesthetic doesn't fully embrace circular screens. 
Android now adds on-screen padding to make sure info isn't cut off where the corners would be, which is helpful, but for such a pretty watch screen, it can feel like you're looking at your notifications through a porthole sometimes. There's also a little inconsistency in ergonomic issues like voice actions. If I get a text, I can reply via voice, but first I have to swipe the screen to get to a menu option to allow me to use my voice. Not a particularly easy task to perform while, say, driving a car. Ditto navigation. I can initiate a voice search for a location, but then I'm presented a list of tiny text options for completing the route which requires me again to slide around on the screen with my finger. When people complain about smartwatches not performing tasks as well as their phones might, it's usually these kinds of controls they're referring to. Lastly, I wish Android Wear had more of a safety net built in for phone proximity. Once you leave the range of Bluetooth, a little disconnect icon pops up on your watch screen, but there's no other alert. On my Pebble, Gear, and Talk, I get a little vibration letting me know that the watch has been disconnected from the phone, and this has saved my butt a couple of times, preventing me from accidentally leaving my phone somewhere. There are third-party Wear applets that can replicate the safety net, but I wish this were a native feature baked into the operating system. Now, my buddy Thunder E from Board at Work is a bit more critical of smartwatches than I am, and I asked him to weigh in on his experiences using this Huawei watch. Yes, it's Thunder E, and Mr. Juan Magnell asked me to give my thoughts on the Huawei watch. Now, Huawei has done a very good job in designing a smartwatch that I think a lot of people would like to wear. And for me, that's one of the main bases of wearing a watch. I like aesthetics, design, style. I really like this. Though, you know, I like the option of a larger watch, watch face, but that's still fine with the Huawei watch. It's got a nice premium metal build around it, really solid feel, real, feels comfortable in my hands. I like the leather straps, easily replaceable. All that good stuff in terms of just material build, I think they've done a good job there. Now, when it comes to Android Wear, that's why I still have my gripes. Android Wear hasn't done much in terms of improving my own feel or comfort on uh, smartwatches in the Android ecosystem. The software doesn't feel like it's really built for the watch. It feels like you have this kind of disjointed, it's not bad, it's just a little disjointed um, flow to it, that I would say. Now, the other hardware thing I should mention that I think Huawei needs to change in the future is they should go away from the dock pin to actually wireless charging. I think that does a really good job in making this really comfortable wristwatch to wear. But overall, I like the build quality from Huawei. Um, I wish Underwear does improve. Hopefully it, it does in 2016. But you know, enough of my yapping. Let me let Mr. Juan Bagdell continue his video. So where does that leave us with the Huawei watch? It's really nice. For folks shopping a smartwatch and looking for a stylish timepiece, Huawei's efforts will be appreciated. It's a clean look that feels sleeker than the G-Watch R. In my opinion, it's a more sophisticated look than the Urbane, and it wears better than the Moto 360. It's a shining example of how to execute an Android-powered watch, and I'm happy to see Huawei building up more of a reputation here in the United States. I'm always going to be a fan of more competition. Smartwatches and wearables are still a wide open field, and there's plenty of room to improve upon the experience with Android Wear, not the least of which is encouraging manufacturers to experiment with different screen technologies. But what we're seeing so far is an effort to move more of our interactions into smart voice commands and subtle haptic responses. Wearing Google Now on your arm brings a lot of benefits, and migrating notifications off of my phone is worth the purchase price for me all by itself. All the other goodies are just gravy. Smartwatches are another step towards the post-smartphone world, and Huawei's solution here is absolutely top tier. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more reviews like these, and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there supporting it by hitting the fan funding, shopping a loot crate, grabbing a free audiobook using the links down below this video, or by sharing my reviews on your favorite social sites like Reddit, Facebook, Google+, and the Twitter. So please keep bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next review.